Welcome to another episode of Continuum Meditations Discusses. In this episode, we will depart from my usual talks on speculative fiction and other entertainment to delve into the real world for just a bit. I'd like to talk about the tactic of revolutionary-style violence and upheaval that appears to be a growing characteristic of American political discourse and American political society, and why I consider this to be a dangerous trend. So apparently, anti-President Trump protests have broken out across the country in several major population centers. While these individuals, groups, and organizations have every right under the United States Constitution to exercise their First Amendment prerogatives of freedom of speech, association, and freedom of assembly, it is imperative that violence, chaos, and disorder not reign in the wake of the voting decision made by the American electorate in November of 2016 and the subsequent January 20th decision or transfer of power this year from the Barack Obama administration to the Donald Trump administration. The peaceful transfer of power must prevail. Ordered liberty must prevail and civilized protest must prevail in its wake. I want there to be no mistake that while I fully support the rights of these people to be out in the streets protesting Donald Trump's election, I will not support their desire to overturn cars, smash windows, set fires, physically assault those who disagree with them, and do other things that disrupt the civil peace and destroy the property and rights of others while they exercise their own rights or use the pretext of protest as an excuse for criminal vandalism, terrorism, and intimidation against those with an opposing opinion. Yes, I firmly agree with many of you that Mr. Trump is among the most openly venal, vile, and narcissistic individuals to ever run for and successfully assume the presidency of the United States in the history of this country. His temperament, knowledge, personality, and bent toward authoritarianism, in my opinion, make him uniquely unqualified to express the kind of statesmanship exemplified by such predecessors as Dwight Eisenhower, John F. Kennedy, Ronald Reagan and Barack H. Obama. Even so, this does not justify some people's belief that they have the right or the excuse to steal and destroy simply because they agree with Donald Trump or happen to disagree with him. If, in the fullness of time, Donald Trump should prove to be some form of authoritarian who demonstrates the capacity to run roughshod over the Constitution and the American people's rights, who assaults the civil peace and rights of Americans through an abuse of power, there are mechanisms wisely set in place by the Founding Fathers to deal with the renegade chief executive, including and up to impeachment and removal from office, and subsequent jail, or prison time, should that become necessary and be proven. But we do have the means in the Constitution of dealing with a rogue executive, and we should ex respect those mechanisms in the name of civilized peace and order. Meanwhile, Donald Trump's legitimate privilege to assume the presidency has been confirmed by the Electoral College. We now have four years to debate whether the decision was honorable or not. My fellow Americans, and those who may listen across the world, it is not for the ascension of a personality that we fight, but for the ascension of ever-increasing liberty under justice revealed in nature as rightly understood by dint of reason given to us by our Creator. It is not for a Republican or Democrat victory that we labor, but a victory for America. This is the meaning of the American creed. Let no man or woman, be they Donald Trump, Hillary Clinton, nor anyone else, separate our allegiance from that ideal. I will leave you with the words of the American founding father, Thomas Jefferson, who wisely admonished us that in questions of power, let me hear no more of confidence in man, but bind him down from mischief by the chains of the Constitution. It is the Constitution that we respect, not personalities, not parties, nor anyone else. May God bless you, and may God preserve the American Republic.